What aspects of the business would you say are important to get right with the long-term goal of selling the business? What makes a business attractive to an investor? Two things, clean books, steady or increasing profits. Yeah, I would say the second, number one is ideal. Number two is a must-have. You could sell a business that has steady or consistent profits with messy books, but it's not ideal. Yeah, these people that are buying businesses, they're they're just looking at friggin' analytics, at profits. And, oh, this is a good this is a good prospect for my portfolio. Yeah, that's all they understand. Yeah, they want that they just want to see the graph. Would selling in one niche be good? Would be good enough as long as there are many suppliers. Yes. I have a specific example, but I don't want to say it because I know people that do it. But like this like the sink, the sink example. There's people that are just selling sinks because there's a, a huge amount of suppliers, there's a lot of uh, volume that's happening there. So they're able to get away with it. Would we, re- would we recommend it? No, just because I think there's, we don't want you getting stuck in that. It's not really necessary. It's something that could work, but I feel like for a beginner to really, what is it called? Foothold? Get a foothold? No, to be like, oh, pigeonholed. For a beginner to be pigeonholed into one thing like that, I think is dangerous. Also, again, people don't care if they buy sinks from a website that are specialized in sinks or if it's specialized in bathroom or if it's specialized in home my I'm only... not saying to do the home but like i'm just trying to give, illustrate the point that it doesn't matter people want to do this stuff because they think it's going to help them get more authority when it's not really the case well like home depot has plenty of authority and they're for selling sinks and they're not just selling sinks one thing i want to say on that is for a broad niche like sinks and i'm not saying there are obviously pros and cons one pro that you might have is if you have a hundred sink suppliers and they're all have different qualities and different sizes and different specifications, it might make the website far easier to organize. And you might have additional user stickiness. If someone is really trying to find that right sink, that's a possibility. But again, it comes with the cons of all you're selling is sinks and you don't really get to, to test out other things. Yeah. It has advantages, but it comes at the disadvantage of, if you don't like selling sinks, then you're screwed. Poor to deals. What do you think about B2B niches for a beginner? Is it much harder than B2C? I'm looking for a niche with a lot of brands and found one interesting in B2B. My advice would be to angle your store in such a way that you can sell B2B and B2C. If we go back to this plumbing example from the beginning of the stream, if you look on like ferguson.com, you could have a plumbing website that sells a host of products that a plumber might buy or a regular residential person might buy. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a niche that you can't also build a B2C aspect around it. 